Hi dear guys and girls, happy Thursday, it's Petra. I'm in uh, orange today, I don't know if you can see that, the little uh, crown, orange t-shirt. Today is our King's birthday, he turns 50 today. So uh, as many of you uh, probably know, uh, the Dutch national colour is orange. So uh, the Netherlands is just filled with orange people. They paint their, or their faces orange today and wear a lot of uh, orange clothes and I just love the colour. It's not that I'm a, a patriot or anything, um, but I do love the colour orange. So I'm going to go out and uh, have a good afternoon and have a couple of drinks for the King. So uh, I thought I'd just um, get dressed up here today. So uh, speaking of birthdays, um, a couple of weeks ago, uh, let me just get your name right. One of the viewers, the best daddy bishes, asked me to make a film, a video on the aging narcissist. So I thought, well, today's a birthday, um, aging, maybe it's a good time to, uh, <laughs> to make this video. Um, yeah, so just to start from the beginning, of course, as we all know, the narcissist is very much into their appearance the way they look, um, you know, very, very superficial, maybe. Um, and especially in the case of the female narcissist, they are very into designer clothes, the hair has to be perfect, the makeup has to be uh, perfect. So it's all, um, it's all about keeping up appearances. So you will find that, you know, young uh, people with the narcissistic personality disorder they will get involved with um, Botoxing at a very uh, early age, in their 20s or 30s. And um, for the narcissist who is a bit older, I have dealt with um, narcissists in their 40s, 50s, 60s. They are very much into, you know, working out in general, um, eating the right foods. Um, they take it to a level of being obsessed with their looks, with uh, their workout um, program, with their eating. Now, don't get me wrong, I mean, I'm a big uh, advocate for eating right, for maintaining a healthy lifestyle, for working out as often as possible. But the narcissist takes it to a whole different level. They become obsessed with the way they look, um, obsessed with the fact that there may be, you know, wrinkles starting to appear. So they they want to become old, but they don't want to look old, which of course, in many cases, who, who does want to look old? You know, it's, that's just human nature. We don't want to look old, but you will find that um, with the narcissist, they um, absolutely fear. They have this obsession of aging, of visibly aging. Um, so they will do everything uh, that they can do to try and slow down that aging process. So it might be Botox, it could be, you know, a tuck here and tuck there. Um, they will just do everything to maintain that, um, that the image that they put out to the rest of the world. So, you know, fishing for compliments is another thing. You know, if, if you meet a narcissist who's turned 50 or 60, if you say to them, what are you 50? Um, you look 40 or you look 35, you know, so, and they glow because they love these, uh, these compliments. Who doesn't? But the difference between someone without the personality uh, disorder and someone with narcissistic personality disorder is that it is just, um, is that it, it truly is, or it becomes an obsession with them. Um, another thing that to me is very interesting and this is also speaking from my own experience as I said in earlier videos um, my mother-in-law who is now uh, deceased uh, was a covert narcissist and she was of course a very mean woman um, said very hurtful things uh, um, to the outside world you know when first meeting her when I first met her I fell in love with her I thought what a wonderful woman She's so kind and she's so loving and, you know, she's a, a great uh, person to sit and have a conversation with. But of course, this didn't last very long because very soon, I think a couple of months 
into um, into meeting her, she started showing her true colours. So very dominant, a very dominant woman. Um, she tended to um, buy people's affection and love. I remember uh, one weekend she came she came over to spend the weekend at my apartment at that time and my husband and I had just started out in our relationship I think it was must be about eight months into the relationship and she came to spend the weekend and I said oh we'll do a, a girls weekend I said I'll get you know we'll uh, put a hair mask in and we'll do your face and uh, you know with a mask and uh, we'll just we we'll just spend some uh, some quality time together doing girly stuff so uh, she was all uh, all for that and that's what we set about doing and at the end of the weekend she had taken a piece of paper and had written down on there um uh, you bought you bought a uh, face mask put the price next to it you uh, did my hair put the price next to it um uh, this is for um the expenses your petrol your traveling expenses for going into the city to buy all the stuff so she had made a little um, calculation and she gave me money for this. And I was like, what the heck? You know, it, it, was, it was just, what a strange thing to do. You know, where you are, um, you think that you are interacting at a, uh, just a, a, a normal level where you're just hanging out together, you're doing stuff together. But she felt that whatever someone did for her, she needed to pay them. So instead of just saying thank you, she expressed her gratitude. I don't know if that's the right word. By paying a person. And, you know, this was just a small amount. Of course, I refused that amount of money. I, it, it was just absolutely strange. Um, but... It, it just continued uh, when my husband and I got married instead of just you know buy, just buy a gift for our home we're a married couple just starting out buy a gift for the home no she had put thousands of euros into our account and said buy yourself something nice it was that does sound strange when I'm saying it because that might be a normal thing to do, to give your uh, newly wed son and his new wife a gift in the amount of cash. But it was just the, the whole um, feeling that I got from it. I felt very uncomfortable. To me, it was like she was buying my affection uh, and not so much wishing that we spend this money on something that we really wanted for our home. So. I hope that makes sense. It was just, as you all know, it's it's a feeling that you get from the narcissist when you realize that they are trying to buy your affection. It just did not feel right. So once again, we put that money back into her account because it didn't feel right. So these are the tactics that uh, the aging narcissist will use. Um, we also found at some point when she realized that buying affection with cash um, was not working in our case, she changed her techniques, she changed her tactics. So what would she do? She would take on the victim role. She would say, no one comes to visit me. No one phones me. You are also busy getting on with your lives. No one has time for me which simply was not true. You know, my husband and I used to go every Saturday, um, do her grocery shopping, which we did from, you know, that's, that's just the natural thing to do with an aging uh, lady or gentleman, uh, and especially if they are your parent or your parent-in-law. So we just go and get her grocery shopping on Saturday, take them over, stop for a coffee, have a chat, and... Um, she found that that was not enough, so she would have this oh, whoa, me story and say that no one uh, was interested in her, no one wanted to spend time with her. So, especially in, in, I would say, in the last five or six years of her life, she continuously played the victim. And it was, it was 
you know, playing the victim that is, it, you could just see right through it that she was playing this victim card, that it was not, um, it was not real, it was not authentic. She wasn't feeling distressed. She was just uh, wanting the extra attention and trying to play on our emotions to feel sorry for her. So this is another tactic that all narcissists use, but when they age, it tends to get worse. So when they feel that one tactic is not working, whether that's manipulating, whether that is gaslighting, whether that is projection, then they will use other tactics, one of them being playing the victim. Um, making up stories. Making up stories, as we know, you know, as I said in my last video, the narcissist lies uh, very much. And um, to give another example of my aging uh, narcissistic mother-in-law, uh, we had gone to Africa to get married in 2001. And the parents, my parents came with, uh, my uh, husband's mother uh, traveled with us. So it was a whole family thing. I think it was 15 of us who traveled to Africa and we got married there. Um, when coming back, this is when she started pulling away. She started the discard uh, with us. So she uh, made up stories to the rest of the family and said, well, uh, I don't know what my son is thinking. He remained in Africa with his wife and I haven't seen them for years. Now this simply wasn't true. We had, of course we did not remain in Africa. We came back to the Netherlands and she chose to move out of the city where we were all staying. She did not let us know. She just had, she hired a moving company and they moved her to a new city and we found out about this maybe a year later. And um, she had just been telling everyone that we had discarded her and that we had remained in Africa and uh, didn't want to have anything to do with her, which just was not true. So you will find that these made up stories that may sound very convincing, but this is another tactic to gain sympathy from others when they feel that they are losing their um, supply. Um, of course, at a later date, I fell pregnant and um, we did try and get in touch with her by way of phone. Um, she had changed her number. We didn't know where to reach her. We didn't know where she was living. So we got in touch with her brother and told him the good news. And he had said she doesn't want to have anything to do with you guys because of all the stuff that you have done to her, because you moved back to Africa. But now we see that you have not moved to Africa. You are still here. So um, we told her brother to please convey to her that she was going to be a first time grandmother and um, which he did. But she refused to acknowledge the fact that I was pregnant. When the baby was born, she refu refused to acknowledge the fact the baby was born. She didn't want to see our daughter. Uh, she never met her granddaughter. And this is the bitterness that comes into play where um, if she didn't get the attention the way she wanted the attention, then she um, decided to take or to diminish our happiness. So, you know, where you are trying to get the narcissist involved, especially the aging narcissist, get them involved in your happiness and the fact that a new life um, uh, has come about, um, they will not like the fact that you are happy and they will diminish this in every way, minimize it. So I truly believe that the older the narcissist gets, the lonelier they get because in the course of their life, of course, people will discover who they are and they will lose friends, lose certain family members, lose even their children who just decide to go no contact with them. So it becomes very lonely. Um, they are all on their own at some point, and this is by their own doing, even though they choose not to see it this way. Of course, the, the fact that they are alone, that no one comes around anymore, they will project that onto you and say, it is you who, um, who has left them all alone and they don't see 
how because of their behavior and because of their actions and because of their words, that is why we make the choice to go no contact. Um, they might mellow as they age, but this will usually be due to the fact that there's an illness involved, you know, uh, uh, an age illness involved, um, and that they mellow due to the effect of the medication that they are on. So you might also experience this where the, the narcissist does mellow, they do become softer and kinder, but this is only for periods of time. You will see that now and then their narcissistic disorder will play up again. It'll show up in, in simple uh, ways. You know, they might just go off the handle, get very enraged at something, I don't know, whatever, however small it may be. They will uh, rage or they will accuse you of stuff, accuse you of, this was also in the case of my uh, mother-in-law, she accused us of stealing the money that she herself had put into her account. She made up a whole story that we had stolen her bank card and that we had gone and withdrawn thousands of euros from her bank account. She got the police involved. She got uh, lawyers involved. And, um, you know, of course, we had to defend ourselves in, in, in that. So these are all the things that they do. This is part of their manipulation tactic. Um, they'll just get meaner. They'll get meaner as they age, sometimes be mellow, but their true nature will always resurface. Um, they are also, from my experience, I don't know if this is with all narcissists, but they are also very fearful of death. And why are they fearful of death? Because they realize that death is the ultimate no contact. Um, they fear what is on the other side of death. And this may, may not just apply to narcissists. Of course, ma very many of us uh, are afraid of the unknown. But in the case of a narcissist, they, are, they fear the loss of control. So when they think of death, they see that as a total loss of control, which keeps them in a state of, of panic. Not all narcissists are like this, but I have known a few who do absolutely fear death. Um, so yeah, a lot of a lot of meanness. They'll just get meaner. They'll um, the the you know especially when age starts showing up in the physical sense, more wrinkles, the hair starts graying. Um, they will not be able to handle this, and because they cannot handle it, they will just tend to. Uh, spit more fire, be more enraged because they want someone to blame for the fact that they are aging. Um, there are so many things, you know, that come into play with an aging narcissist, uh, being cut out of the will. Again, this happened to us. We were cut out of my husband's mother's uh, will. Um, I don't know where the money went. Um, I'm not curious to know where the money went. I just know that she totally uh, disowned her son um, and of course me being married to him I was also uh, disowned cut out of the family will so these are the kinds of things that they will do in the last attempt in a finally attempt to shame you to guilt you um, to project their meanness onto you so it is um, it is very sad. It is very sad. Um, again, not all narcissists are like this, but this is, you know, from, from my own experience, I've seen how they can be so, um, so much focused on their self that even later on in life, they will not, they might feel it. They might feel that they want to engage in a bit of your happiness, engage in the fact that they are becoming a grandparent but this is not often the case. They will just be even meaner because they realize that time is moving on and that there will be um, final no contact by way of death. Um, 
how have you experienced this? How have you experienced a narcissistic parent or parent-in-law uh, who is aging? What are their tactics? What have you experienced? I'm, I'm very curious to hear your part of the story. So thank you. That was it for today. Um, I have received, again, very, very many emails from all of you and I try and answer at least 10 a day. So if you have not been answered yet, please know that I am working on it and I will get back to you um, this coming weekend. Thanks again for watching. Take care and uh, speak to you all very soon. Bye now.